guys Eva here welcome back to my channel the inked reader today I am doing one of those wrap up that are about books that are not in a reading challenge not in a previous TBR but just books that I've read or listened to and I need to wrap them up uh, again these videos are not really often put on my channel just because because I read a lot of other books for challenges or TBRs I don't read much apart from that but I, when I accumulate six things, I do want to read. And today I don't have a pity to share with you. But someone might argue I got something better. So this just came in the post. I didn't open it. And then we got these. Well, I don't want to say anything. That. So. And I am so freaking happy with these. Can you see it's a little bit glare? I love this series that um, Uncle Robert is doing, like it's called Myth. I think it's an old series, I don't think it's something that's coming out this way. I kind of miss the train on that. But this one, when I saw it, it's just, it's just, can we, I fell in love with this. Absolutely in love. I love Funko Pop, as you can tell. So yeah, I don't have a pin bag of this. To share with you. Pins will be back though. I, I love me some Funko Pop as well. So yeah, she's gonna stay. I'm not, I'm not gonna leave her there forever. It's what I feel. I don't want to get. Um, I give you some statistics, which is pretty self-explanatory. I'm gonna wrap up some books for you. Uh, so I've read six books. Actually, read more mangas than books, but. Stay tuned because I'm going to do another video, which is a surprise about the mangas that I've read. And the general for these, I'm not going to go into much specific here, but I will get into a specific general or subgenre, I should say, of fantasy. If you don't know what I mean, check this video out down below. Uh, but I've read four fantasy to be divided in further genres. And one I couldn't honestly I couldn't come up with the genre so I just put general fiction and one thriller and as far as the rating goes two things were in the range of two stars two things were in the range of three stars and two things were in the range of four stars no groundbreaking five stars if you've been following me my five stars like I mean people say you know oh I, I rarely give five stars I almost never give five stars like five stars are for the books that I love and that I, they gave me so emotional and it's so rare these days. So yeah, no luck here, no five stars. Third thing I've read outside any other TBR and challenge was, it's got a bit dusty, um, Down Among the Sticks and Bones by Shannon McGuire, which is book number two in a companion series, more or less companion series. Um, called The Wayward Children, I believe. This is a portal fantasy. So we follow a bunch of children that have traveled to fantasy worlds, might be like kind of like Narnia. So they all travel to different worlds. They have their own rule. And when they come back, some of them, they cannot adjust to reality anymore. And so this lady, really weird lady, goes to the parents, talks to them, say, listen, I can bring them to my boarding school, kind of let them adjust again to normality. And that's what happens in the first book with our first protagonist. She's whisked off to this boarding school for children who have been to other worlds and they're not happy to be back. Now, again, it's, it's a companion series, in, but you do, record, you do follow recurrent characters in some of the books so I would definitely say not all of them most of them are different characters but there are I believe this for example is a sequel so just you know I would go in order definitely and this specific is about Jack and Jill the twins that you get to meet in the first book and they are really important characters so again I'm not going to spoil anything about these but you follow Jack and Jill and this is about their story before the events that take place in every earth a doorway so keep that in mind Potentially, you might even want to actually read this before the first one, if it makes sense, because this is, takes place before. But anyway, I, from the synopsis of this, from the kind of world where Jack and Jill end up, that I know from the first book, I thought I was going to love this. I think in this series I've heard so many people say that this is their favourite one, and it wasn't, which is super weird. I was genuinely expecting this to be my favourite as well. It just sounded right up my alley, like, very... Uh, the world they travel to is full of supernatural creatures which I love and it's a really dark world and 
I don't understand why this didn't work as the first one. I did. I guess one of the things is that while I didn't mind that the first book was so short, on this one I thought the lack of pages kind of also portrayed a lack in an opportunity to tell a story in, with enough details for me to actually get to love it, if it makes sense. So I love the characters, love the dark world, I just, what happens because I don't have enough time to adjust to the world and the characters in it, it didn't affect me, so as I guess it was supposed to, so I didn't get the attachment and somehow I didn't love it. So I gave it 3.5 stars, I definitely read this in basically one sitting, I'm still continued on and I still enjoy the series overall. I really, really recommend this. It's just that it's not my favorite in the series. As of now, I prefer the first one. Then I read, listened to uh, an audiobook on the script, and this was Tunnel of Bones by Victoria E. Schwab, uh, which is a paranormal fantasy series, middle grade series. I don't remember the name of the first book. Sorry, it's been a long day. And in the first book, you got your protagonist there for a series of events. Uh, that I don't want to spoil, she basically can communicate and speak and see ghosts. And in this one, her family travels around because they are kind of paranormal hunters and they do documentaries. And in this one, they travel to Paris. I really enjoyed the setting. Um, it had, again, it's one of the stories that had potential but felt really flat in the end. I, I didn't bring in anything new to the table. It was just a different mix of the same ingredients that we had in the first. I didn't particularly enjoy the mystery that we follow. I guess this is where the middle grade part comes in. It just kind of felt really childish to a certain degree. I was expecting you know, to be spooked or to get more out of the story. Instead, it was more really bland, which I do get why. So again, just three stars. I might continue on with the series. I might not if I found them on script for free. Uh, it's, it's, I love the cover, so it is frustrating because I might buy them just for the cover if I find really, really, really cheap. But it's not a bad series, it's not a series I hate, it's just a free, it's just really flat in the, in the middle. And then I continued on, actually, I've read Beneath the Sugar Sky by Shannon Maguire. And again, I talked about the premise with this, so I'm not gonna go into that. In these, you actually follow some of the characters that you meet in the first one when this girl falls from the sky and she needs help to rescue her mom. This one is all about a nonsensical world, which I, I loved. I really, really enjoyed this one. You know, now you have to go into this one, putting aside any logic you might have. Like if you logically think, okay, you're in a fantasy world, but you know, even a fantasy world or a sci-fi, they still use sometimes a lot of science, um, things that make sense, not in this one. Like even in this one, if you had to logically think about these things that happen, putting aside the fantastical element, it would still not make any freaking sense. And it was that absurd, but I guess it's all right because we are in a nonsensical world. So there are some words in this um, series that are really logical uh, and some other words are totally nonsensical. This was one of the latter one. And I, I loved it. I loved the character. I love the journey we go through. It's one of those where, yes, it's short, but I did not mind. It gave me enough to feel fulfilled at the end of the story. I'm glad how it wrapped up. I'm just really happy with how this played out. And it's just 4.5 stars. Again, I deserve my five stars just for the books that really, you know, makes me so emotional and so attached. But I love this. I absolutely love this. I, I think it's like probably my favorite one so far. It's really close to the first one though. It's a really different story, so I, I would not be able to really, really, really decide, but again, really strong book, really strong sequel, cannot wait to continue on. Then I listened to Here There Are Monsters by Amelinda Baroop. I don't know how you pronounce that, this was on script, and it was a fairly recent release, I think it came out in 2019, and this, I don't, I am not really sure what to put these in, how to categorize it. I would... If I had to be really precise, this is a magic realism attempt of horror fantasy book. If it makes sense. Probably doesn't. Spoiler alert, this book it doesn't make sense anyway. And we've got our protagonist. She just relocated with her family near the woods um, after they had some trouble with bullying in their previous town. And the bullying is not directed at her necessarily, but at her younger sister, who is really weird, kind of creepy. And our protagonist, who is the older sister, always try to protect her. But when they move to this new town, the older sister decides that she has enough and, you know, that her sister has to kind of grown up. 
fend for herself. So when they start school, our protagonist starts a new friend and kind of making a circle of acquaintances and, you know, hanging about and her sister is not yet integrating well and one day the sister just disappears. So you start the book where the sister disappeared and, you know, the parents are panicking, our protagonist feels guilty and she will go on on a journey to find her sister. It was really hard to come up with uh, actually in general for this book and I think I came up with a pretty good answer so clap for me because this book attempts to be many things and achieve nothing and this is also one of the rare instances where personally I've not read many where you got you follow an unlikable character which is not interesting the more you read the more you realize you know oh yeah she really wants you not to like this girl but you she doesn't give you enough I don't know, it's just not, it, she's not interesting. She's not like a broody or bad girl necessarily. It's not even, I was not even mad with that. I just honestly didn't care. It was a bland, unlikable character, if it makes sense. The only one who was a bit interesting was the love interest. And he gets a shitty deal in all of this. And when we get to the ending, after, you know, hours of audiobook, which I did not particularly enjoy, we got to an end that does not pay off anything and I was like what is the point of this whole book like there was no point nothing in the end ended up justifying the journey we went on because the resolution was just not there and it's not an open ending it's nothing of the sort it's just literally when you go all through the trouble for nothing if it makes sense now I hope that's not a spoiler but to be honest I gave this two stars I'm not recommending this skip it. I cannot say a single thing that would be in favour of this book apart from the fact that well I did manage to listen to all of it. It was okay enough to push me through uh, but yeah two stars. And then my last audiobook is actually a collection of short stories and this is my favourite girlfriend was a French bulldog by Lenya Rodriguez Iglesias. I'm butchering the name. Uh, this was a really short audiobook three hours and I freaking hated it. No, I didn't hate it. Okay, I'm being dramatic. I didn't hate it, but it was really uninteresting. And because it's an audiobook, if I don't find it interesting, I kind of get, you know, I kind of get distracted. I probably half of the story would not even be able to tell you what they were about. And I remember that I would start to listen to a story and say, okay, now I've listened to you. Just sit down here and now you listen to all of this because you need to understand what's the fuss about, something's wrong with you, now you sit here and you listen to all this story and you get to the end of the story and you grasp a meaning in this story, no matter how abstract it might be. Every time I tried, I, I failed. I would start listening to the story and then I would just drift off and just think about other stuff. That's how boring this was. It wasn't necessarily bad. Did I give it one star? No, because I never end up listening to the story long enough to decide whether this is shit. So I decided this is shit just because I could not even be pulled through all the story and paying attention. So I gave this two stars, but it's really close to a one star, I'll be really honest. I just don't see the point. I didn't even know this is magic realism, is that general fiction. Your guess is as good as mine and I've read it. So, and so I cannot honestly suggest this. I just, I would feel bad to suggest such a book that I didn't enjoy, but I think I've heard someone who really enjoyed I I don't know. Again, me and short stories, it's really hard. I honestly do not like usually short stories. So that might have played a part. But And then I have read in three sittings, I guess, because I was, I had to, not because I wanted to, I want to finish this in one sitting. I'm thinking of ending things by I by Ian I am by Ian Raid. Uh, this is actually coming out as a movie on Netflix. I think it's already out. And this is a thriller, and you follow this couple that they are traveling at night to go and meet his parents for the first time who live in the countryside. And she is thinking of ending things. <sighs> now, now I I struggle with this. I mean, I'm excited though. It's a really nice struggle. Did I love this? No. But I respect the hell out of it, if it makes sense. I think I've never read something like this. Now, this is a thriller. It's not necessarily a horror, but this 
book scared me more than the majority of books I've ever read. For example, I read The Shining and I love The Shining by Stephen King and but just a few, two maybe scenes really scared me off. And I still remember how the feeling of you being really scared. This one was that feeling all the time. In Rebecca it says you will be scared but you don't know why. And I cannot say it in any way that's better than actually this short sentence. It's so freaking unsettling. It's crazy. I think the way he writes makes it unsettling. So again, apart from the plot, which yes, is scary itself. Like, yeah, like there is no denying that what happens. And you know, the characters when they are creepy as fuck. But the way he writes about them, that's where, you know, we got the skills. So I did respect that a lot because he wanted you to go on a journey and be really, really afraid. And you are. I mean, I was, definitely. I was, I was like, what am I reading? Like, where is this going? Now, why did I not love it in the end? Is because this is actually a really painful book to read. It's actually, again, the payoff, I guessed at one point. So I put out a thousand theories of what was happening because it's really weird and I turn out that some of my hypotheses were actually correct and when the end happens and everything is cleared more or less there are some plot uh, threads that are lost but when the majority of a big revelation comes I was like listen man you just made me suffer through hours of reading just to get here why and that's why I love but at the same time kind of resent this book a little bit. Yes, I found it brilliant. Yes, I would suggest it 100%. I'm gonna go and watch the movie 100%. I'm just, I'm curious also to share it with other people in my life and see what they think, because it's what kind of book that, you know, you, you talk about, you share with other people. So I would definitely recommend this. I gave this four stars in the end. And I don't know what would have made these a five stars. I guess if I didn't have guessed. When I can guess, I always get annoyed. And then when I realized I was right, I was like, all oh, this pain for this. And there are a couple of more things that I like to discuss, but they would be spoilers, so I'm not gonna say. And just some parts of the plot, so just we never find out, we're just left. Uh, but I would suggest this. I think this is one of the weirdest, at least the way it's told, it's one of the most unsettling, weirdest thing I've ever read. Um, so I will definitely say give it a try if not watch the movie and if you want to discuss this in the comments uh, more than welcome I love to discuss these just leave you know maybe if you put some spoilers just you know warn other people that might read uh, but let's discuss this 100% disturbing this is disturbing it's just, it is it is I need to recognize that this is a gem I'm just a bit frustrated with it but I loved it, I really enjoyed it overall. I'm glad I ended up on a bit of a higher note. It was a roller coaster of a wrap up, I guess. Thank you for watching. Let's discuss these in the comments down below. I'll see you next time. Take care. I think that's nice things to say at the end of a video. And me and my hands are gonna go away now. Ciao.